back to Site Tech Intermountain, SiteWorks Machine Guidance uh, videos. This is a video on using the SiteWorks Machine Guidance skid steer or compact skid steer to actually build up a pad. And I'm going to do an infill design. So on my screen, you can see that I do have an actual job site design. There's a road that comes in over there. I've got sidewalk. And there's a very large building that will be built here. But they've got to build this up quite a bit right here and put in a block wall. So what we're doing is building in lifts and we're trying to step it up as we go. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to use your machine guidance for a skid steer that doesn't have the traditional box blade, grader blade, or anything on the front. This is the, the beauty of this new system is we've got the stock bucket on here. We've got our, our sensor on here if you're new to the product that we've actually got on the quick coupler. And then there's our R782 with the uh, antenna that's up higher to be able to get further back to our base. So what I'm going to do, and we're just going to show you real quick, is we've already built in a flat pad here. We did this yesterday with this machine. But from right about where this pin is, we've got an infill design that we want to actually use this elevation off of this pin right here. I'm going to set the cutting edge on it in here just a second to actually establish the elevation and then I'm just going to kind of eyeball an area back here, but I'm just going to use this as a flat pad option, a flat plane option, because I'm not at the point where I can actually build in the model, per the model on there. So let's go ahead and jump in and set it up. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, I do have a full model. I have a full-blown road that comes in, parking lot building. But in the corner right here, I just want to do some infill design. I want to just create my own flat plane. So on the options right here underneath where it shows the excavator the bucket focus point and then the roller stuck in the mud there's one that's a stack of papers if i go in there i can actually see what i want to do as a level plane either a sloping plane or a circular whatever it is i can actually go ahead and create something right here so you can either key in an elevation so if you know what the elevation is out on your main screen right here at the top where I've got a 50, 18, 17. You can either key that in or you can go record a point on that pin over there with the rover or the machine and actually actually use that as a point based on hitting this menu right here. So a couple different ways to do it. But let me show you one way to do it so you don't have to memorize the number. So if I just go out to my main screen, I'm going to use the center point of my bucket right here. And without messing the pin up, I'm going to go ahead and just set out there on that pin. So there, I'm on the pin out, to out there on the center of my bucket. What I'm going to do is go to the roller stuck in the mud, which is my measure type. And I'm actually going to record a point right there. And I'm going to change it to a feature point. And I'm just going to call it my pin. This is just one way to do it. And I'm going to go to my main screen and I'm going to shoot a point. So now that I've actually got a point, if I zoom down in on there, I can actually back off it. It doesn't really matter if I'm still sitting there. Now what I can do is go in here, go to my menu and measure, and that icon on the left side is going to come up again, my flat plane. So level plane, I'm going to go to my elevation, hit the menu, and I'm going to tap that right there, and I'm going to hit that. So there's my 5018.594. So surface offset, what I can do is say, hey, I want to be about 0.65 above that, 0.65, and I'm going to be above that. I could save it as a design, but I'm not going to. I'm going to hit accept, and I'm going to go there, and now you can see I've got to fill a 74. So, for example, if I go ahead and just set back up here by this pin and set it right about at the same elevation that that pin was, there you go. I've got to fill a 0.65, so we're good to go. This black line represents my bucket, but here's the beauty of it is now I can go ahead and just grab material. I can go to my top left right here and actually go down through this list, and I can put in a vertical cut, cut fill light bar if I want. And I can turn on the audio so that I can just listen to it, so I don't have to necessarily watch it. But now it's just a game of actually going and grabbing material and establishing what I need to. So let's do this real quick for a little bit. Checking grade for this would be a couple different ways, right? Depending on the operator, some guys might just go up there and just put their bucket flat and look up there and be like, oh, Still got to fill a three to seven huns. Or since you've got the sensor, 
you can put the bucket straight down on it and listen for that audio. You could go down on it and cut it clean that way, right? So I could come down, I could turn my, my audio back on and actually go that way. Couple different ways, basically set down on it and just listen. So right there is a cut of a tenth, so I'm still a little high. Right there is basically on grade. If you want to do it via the audio, everybody's a little different. I personally don't like the audio. I just leave that off, watch my numbers. And if I wanted to up here, if I don't really care much about what's going on on the design because I just made a flat plane, go ahead and move your cut fill light bar over right here and then make it full screen. So you can literally just run off of the full screen right there. So that's my grade. So there's a cut of about a hundredth. So now I can just watch my light bar and go fill things in. So at this point, once you've kind of roughed some material in and you got it close, now it's just a game, since you don't have automatics, a game of just watching your numbers. And just, you know, if it's easier to just go slow and actually cut and look, every operator's a little bit different. I would actually run it more like just use it as a grade rod, right? I would just kind of rough stuff in, get it close, and then put the bucket down and actually look at what the grade is. So once I've kind of flattened that off, I can go up top put my bucket down and go, okay, I'm about a fill of a tenth right there, just a little bit off. And then right there is about cut of 200. So pretty close. So it's pretty handy, pretty useful because I'm still using the actual bucket on the machine um, to where I can move the material around myself. I can manipulate it, move it, and still have all the grade that I need to. Um, grader blades, box blades are great, but you can't really move material unless you detach that piece of equipment and actually put your bucket on so this is a pretty handy tool so once i get up on it one more time i'm going to just go ahead and touch down and be like okay there's my grade i'm about a cut of a half an inch which is totally fine because it's actually going to roll down then i can come up move up touch right there and be like okay there's a cut fill about four huns so pretty cool tool uh, you can change your screens once again around to whatever you need um, I've already established a grade up there. Now I can just continue to fill and fill and fill. And if I wanted to change these screens back, I can just change it back by flipping to there and actually reference any building pads, anything I need to. So hopefully this video from Sight Taking a Mountain on the new Sightworks machine guidance for skid steers or compact loaders helps for any different application you can think of. You got to think outside the box yourself on this, but this is using the machine to create an infilled flat plane and cut it the grade. Thanks for watching.